go on, give him praise, honor him, adore him, let him hear your voice, make your tongues louder, 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 worship to him, I need you here, come breast, sell a token, jata kapakate la baradia bayata, can I hear some people who are ready to voice it out to the Lord, just pray, go ahead and just pray, go ahead and just pray, shata kapete la kapai, Zirondra glata bande velete kosata ayaj. Jede de 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 bele de boko baraga diya bayande. Mambo sata balaka paradia de de Jata da 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 balada baradia. Mambo seke teke teke kataba. Zibara kata kate kata sabande. Somebody go ahead and pray. Somebody go on and pray. Go on and pray. Go on and pray, go on and pray. Zikrota la telega dega desh. Jada da da dega dega naga da baladia. Mara da deko sokote kata balande bendoriama. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. You reign. You reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign. tonight and say reign supreme over my life reign reign supreme reign 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 over my life over my life my ministry my family reign 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 I call oh God that you will reign over my life reign reign let your hand reign supreme over my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are free. 
Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Help me welcome two people beside you and say, Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may please have your seats in God's presence and welcome once again to Zion tribe, God's dwelling place. It's another time to seek God's face here tonight and to also pray. Praise the Lord. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. And this is part two. And tonight, I want to begin to talk about something that is very, very important. And um, like somebody will peep into your sermon, I began to see Pastor Mike begin to touch a scripture that is dear to my heart tonight. The covenant of God for anyone who faced the Jerusalem temple. <laughs> you know, I, I was trusting the Lord for how to go from where we stopped the last time. And then the Lord began to tell me one of the best thing, or one of the best thing that happened to my foundation is the fact that I was trained on altars. Yeah. And so uh, what I did not know while growing up, even though I got angry while, when I gave my life to the Lord for having to take me through that kind of journey, one thing that I did not know was the fact that the Lord was using those experiences to train me to make me know the existence of fake means that there is original uh -huh. so if a system is perverse the reason it exists in the first place was because there is one that is original there is one that is strong there is one that is quality there is one that is uh, from the right source and I saw grow up in a place where shrine makes a lot of sense to them. They are different kind of shrine for different kind of gods and they enjoy worshiping them and they do a lot with them. And you are going to learn so much tonight. And apart from the fact that you're learning, you are also going to pray. Hallelujah. Let's begin. I want to teach on what I titled Mysteries of Altars. The Mysteries of altars hallelujah let me start with definition and i'd like you to write take a note take a pen and make sure you are writing something you are about to learn something very very important that will help your prayer life an altar is a system of authorization an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument an altar is a system of authorization. It is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. An altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. I say that again. An altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm. Now, there are many illegitimate platforms where, you know, the realm of the spirit can make contact with the physical realm. There are many of them. You understand? But um, the only legitimate route is the altar of prayer. Hallelujah. The only legitimate route is the altar of prayer. Now, if you remember, Two men. The first time we are going to see an altar in the Bible was uh, because somebody was killed on an altar. Two guys, I don't know where they got the information from that you can offer sacrifices to the Lord. Brothers went to create an altar and then began to offer sacrifice. And the one had offered his own, the other offered his own. And the Bible talked about how that the offering of one was accepted. The offering of the other was not accepted. Now, I kept reading the Bible. And if not for the fact that the blood said, Cain did not offer with the right heart, you would have thought that something was wrong with the physical element. So it wasn't about the physical element, it was about art. Praise the Lord. So it means that if two people here, 
decide to give God money. And one is giving 10 million. The other one is giving five naira. The one giving five naira may be accepted before the Lord. And the one giving 10 million may not be accepted because the art may not be right. And I have found that in the body of Christ that there are a lot of people giving gifts, giving things to the Lord with uh, wrong motives. A lot of people, they are gambling when they are giving to the Lord. The last time I gave, I gave 10 naira. He gave me 100 naira. So let me give 50 naira. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's how people would do sports betting. That's how they do. You know, the last time, <laughs> uh, sure odds. What did they go? <laughs> you know the way they do the sure odds. <laughs> so they will say, uh, if I put 1,500 naira on this thing, uh, it will give me back, you know, 50 million naira overnight. I mean. You know, that's the kind of game a lot of people have given to the Lord. And that's why we do not have uh, enough genuine men in the body of Christ today who are given to the Lord. You will see that something is tied to it. And uh, you, you were saying something the last time, Pastor Mike. I'm, I'm going to say a lot of things about what you said. You were saying something. Uh, you quoted that scripture. This is a generation of them that seek thy face, O Jacob. A generation is going to arise that when they give... The whole of their life to the Lord, not just their money. It will be with a genuine heart. Mm. There is, I, I wrote an article many years ago about motives and motivation. The reason why people do what they do to the Lord. And you will see a lot of corruption in the reason why people do what they do. You see that a lot of hearts are corrupt hearts. There are people doing things for the Lord today for the sake of faith. And so that's the reason why when fame does not come, they get angry. There are people doing things for the Lord today for the sake of position. That's the reason why if position refuses to come at the time they expect it, they get angry. There are people doing things for the Lord today for the sake of marriage. That's the reason why when marriage did not now come at the time it's supposed to come, they get angry. There are people doing things for the Lord today because they saw that somebody made money out of it. One guy asked me and said, this thing that we are doing, sir, how long so, is, is somebody supposed to do it before the person blow? <laughs> and I said, well, if you want to blow, this is not what you should be doing. Because it's not for people who have the mindset of blowing. It's for people who want to serve the Lord. They are, this is a call for servants. The moment you get the motive wrong, you will, you will run after life. You will never meet up. It's true. Motive and motivation. That's the reason why some people get and get, got up one morning and refused to go to church. The things that were motivating them is no longer gingering them again. Motives and motivation. So, so now let's begin in church today to begin to check motives. Why do you do what you do? Sir, if we remove that thing from the equation today, will you still serve God? Father, you failed me. I'm not going to go to church again. That was your motive. That was what you were looking for in the first place. You were not looking for Jesus. You were looking for something else. And because that thing had not failed, you, there is no reason again to push. Have you, have you seen the way people get angry over flimsy things in church? And you wonder, sister, you... And then I'm looking at it and I'm saying, so that's what made you stay here. I, I sieve and filter my desires all the time. That if peons, <laughs> peons, peons, if all the glory, eh, just leave one day, we just say, serve God. And let me tell you, I opened up myself for God to test me, test me with money, take the money. He has taken money away from me many times. You will see me stand like a rock. Because money didn't bring me here. There were days when I could not afford singlets, proper singlets. It was one locks like that we were buying. You buy it today, it's white. I promise you in the next one month, no matter the kind of soap you are using to wash that thing, it's going to turn brown. 
I mean, go and get the, go and get the best detergent. Go and get the best detergent in the whole world. It will turn brown, and the dude will be looking at you like this. He will send you. So to if we even be able to afford, I say I, I will buy shoe, shoe. I will go to the market look for the best shoe, and that shoe you are sure, three months max, the shoe has gone back to the market. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, motives and motivation. These two brothers came and, and set up altars. And the altar, the, I mean, I don't know where the information came from, but both of them made up their mind to do something for the Lord. Only that, after gathering everything and coming for the event, the Lord said, this one, I'll take. This one, I will reject. You could already see how corrupt the art of Cain is at the end of the old game. The guy still went ahead to kill his brother. So what kind of offering will a murderer offer to God that will be acceptable? Have you seen people give offering and after dropping offering short, you were not forced, nobody pushed you, you will have sat down gently where you see nobody will beat you. And then after dropping the, you, I mean, it, it, sometimes it looks like somebody want to, some people want to throw the offering in, the, into their, like the, the, like the offering will, will, will be like stone, and they just hit it on God's hands and say, "Take, if you want it, oh yeah, collect now." You reign, you reign, hello, you reign, you reign. You reign, hello, you reign, you reign, you reign, hello, you reign. And so, after Cain killed Abel, that's when I know that the Bible said the life of the flesh is in the blood. I know the blood is an entity. It's not liquid. Praise the Lord. The blood of Abel had to travel to heaven to go and report the matter. It was the blood of Abel that went to report to God. Tell God they have killed your son. And the Bible came, I mean, the Lord came and said, I, I heard the blood crying. You, you don't understand. So blood can actually pray. Hey, blood can pray. Is the reason why today, let me tell you, the worst of sicknesses and disease all over the world today are blood related. The devil knows that if they can get your blood, they have gotten you. I mistakenly cut my hand on something about three weeks ago or so, and blood came out. Ah, when I saw it, it was like God just wanted to speak to me with that blood. So I lifted it. I said, God, God, I pray in the name of the Lord God of us, my blood will not be corrupt. Yeah. I, I, I had to. See, see, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The devil is looking for blood. Every day, the devil is looking for blood to suck or to corrupt. It's like a computer system. Once a virus enters, you can sometimes be sure that that system will crash. The blood. Blood is powerful. Is the reason why when Jesus came, it has to be his blood. Because if Jesus has come as a, as a spirit, there will have not been blood. Hallelujah. I'm still defining altar. An altar is the platform where covenants are activated and maintained. Altars. An altar is the platform where covenants are activated and maintained. A covenant cannot work without altar. Go and check from Genesis to Revelations where people set up altars. They, were, they, they did so, I mean, where people enacted covenant, they did so on altars. There is no way a covenant will ever work without an altar. And when we were young, when we were small, many of us had prayer altar in our house. How many, how many of us came from families where they pray every morning? All those families where 
if you are if you are Yoruba person, eh, you must be. I'm sure that your parents had bell in their house. Where's my bell? And they will ring the bell in the morning. If you don't want to die that day. <laughs> and sometimes it will look like the, the man. <laughs> eh? The, the man just want to do wickedly that day. They will ring the bell in such a way that it will not be too loud. Because they know that you sleep badly. And you will be wondering, I, I, I didn't hear any bell. I, I, I didn't grow up like that, but I lived in a house for a few months where, you know, there, there's always prayer meeting every morning like that. And this, this, there is no, I, I have never heard the bell. There was no day I heard that bell rang. But the children, I don't know the kind of ears they have. They will hear the bell and then tap the bed. Boom! So three of us, like three of us sleep on this on one bed. Eh? One person hears the bell and hits the bed. <laughs> That's to tell you, oh, if you don't run, you are dead. <laughs> and you will see the old man stand by the door like this with cane in his hand. He's looking for who will come out last. I mean, it's like we are coming to fight war every morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So covenant cannot work without an altar. Covenant cannot work without. It is an altar that gives life to a covenant. An altar gives life to a covenant. We had, have a program in Soul Live Global that we call uh, Covenant Day of Breakthrough. It is a, it's an altar where we enact and reenact, you know, and reassure ourselves of the covenant we have with the Lord and reactivate sometimes and sacrifice I mean, bring sacrifices to the altar. A lot of these things in the body of Christ are being left behind because some people just believe that the Old Testament is far different from the New Testament. They believe that the New Testament is a disconnect. It's um, uh, a, 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 something to just tell you that the Old Testament does no longer, I mean, is no longer in existence. I mean, I, I'm not here for such argument. Now, altars can be any of these three. Number one, altars can be physical monuments. In those days, you will see the fathers erect stones. And then they will name the place. You will see them erect stones on mountains. And, and, and they will name the place. And that becomes an altar. Now, one thing you don't know is if you at any time find yourself around those altars, portals will open. Praise the Lord. Let me remind us of a movie. How many of you have seen that movie, War Room? In War Room, somebody wanted to buy the, the, the woman's house and came into a particular room. I mean, the Bible says our spirit bears witness that we are sons of God. As soon as the pastor came into that room and he said, Kai, somebody has been praying here. And the woman laughed. Now, if you enter a room where somebody prays regularly, you must know if you are in the spirit. I'm telling you, I don't need to tell you that this is my prayer room. Once you enter, even if you are in sin, something will prick you to know that this one, this place, is a prayer room. That's the reason why you should not just allow any rubbish in your room. Somebody listening to me, the place where you kneel to pray to your God must be a place that is holy, that is sanctified, a place that you are sure that God, eh, the Spirit of God, resident here, he stays here. I don't joke with my altar. So it's not everybody that is permitted to enter. Yeah. And everywhere we have gone, you, have, you will always see me set up a room. It's not because we are idolizing the physical place. But we are men of the Spirit. We understand these things. I will set up a room only unto the Lord. It's not a place where you come and be doing worship, worship. And nothing bad can enter that place. You don't understand. It's not, we are not idolizing it. There must be such a place. I told us my experience. One day, I was still, you know, working inside the redemption camp. And then there is a particular work that was to go on at a particular side of the camp. And then it has, it needed me and some other people to enter into a push path. This is many years ago, 2000, 
you know, 19, 2000, 2001, thereabout. And while I entered into the bush, I saw a pathway. And I was like, ah, how can a pathway be in, in this place? So we began to trace it. And then we traced it to a place where we found a bench. Touch light. Bible with um, um, glossy, glossy leather kind of cover. Zipped. From the place where they zip it, you will see that the place, whole place is glossy. So if rain falls, it cannot enter the paper. And then, you know, something that looks like a pillow. And you will see footpaths all over the place. And you see footpaths of dogs or two all over the place. It's a place where the man of God has been prayed. Inside the bush. If you are not somebody who has lived in the village before, you have lived in the wilderness before, you can't come to that place during the day. To pray, not to talk of during the night. And I've seen him walk that path to go and pray in the midnight several times. Altars. And you see this man come out in the afternoon and say, in the name of Jesus, everyone seek here, be healed. You would think that it is that easy. Everyone that has told you that miracles are easy, they did not lie. But there's a part of the truth they didn't tell you. When you were sleeping, eh? the uneasy part of it, that requires communication with God, they were settling it. Elohim, you reign. That's the reason why some people will remain empty and small for the rest of their lives. Because they think prayer is a show. They think prayer is about you coming to show everybody that you can pray. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. They think prayer is... And that's why when you see them talking about prayer. Have you seen people who don't pray talk about prayer? They know prayer more than anybody praying. They will tell you hours of prayer that does not exist. How they pray 17 hours. Invite them for a one hour prayer. You will see how lazy and empty people can be. I invited some people for prayer one day. I was, I was angry. I, I, I was angry at myself for inviting them. Prayer is not just. Prayer is praying. What it takes to pray is to pray. These people came to just. You you will take a prayer point like this. They will say, stop, 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 stop. Fine. You know, God told me some times ago, and they are the one that God is always telling something, but they don't pray. And that's how to know when familiar spirit has possessed people. Man of God, the way to pray is to pray. Prayer. Fire spirit, get down in the name of Jesus. That's how to pray. It's not to come and tell me, ah, this God shall. Fire, this God shall. This God is a wonderful God. Though. There's a testimony time, there's prayer time. Leave that one till when we are done, we pray. 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 What it means to talk during prayer session or to gist during prayer session is that you are sleeping during prayer session. That's the same thing that happened to Peter. Peter! You cannot watch with me for one hour. You better pray. So that you will not enter into temptation. Many believers today only talk about prayer. They don't pray. There are many people here. Look at me very well. I love you. If you are looking for truth, come. I'll tell you. If you are looking for lies, don't come around me. You see this, your prayer life. It's not going to command breakthrough. This prayer life that looks like somebody is forcing you to pray. Some people, so, see, I, I'm not saying I'm seeing you. I'm just telling you what may be going on with some people. Open ignition in the morning and, ah, can I say, I will talk if it does not seem. If you are praying for me, please, if you are praying because of me, stop, don't come again. Because you see this me that you are looking for now. I'm looking for breakthrough like mad. This level? No, it can't be this level. I can't remain here. Reason I wake up every morning like a lion and pursue my life as though I have not attained anything. So, altars can be physical monument, altar can be institution. The Jerusalem temple is an institution built by Solomon. In 2 Chronicles, the scripture that Pastor Mike was quoting the other time, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 21. The Bible says, Hearken therefore unto the supplication of thy servant and of thy, of thy 
people, Israel, sorry, which they shall make towards this place. That's to the, to, to, tomorrow. There's a religion that when they pray, they face that side. There, there's there's um, a bearing of how they get where that side of Jerusalem temple is. And that even if they pray in the, in the middle of the bush, they will locate that direction. It's a covenant. And you are angry because they are not, they, they, it looks like they are not Christians and they are getting money. Covenants are powerful. It does not respect religion. Hello, sir. Covenants are powerful. It does not matter who is, so long as you can bring sacrifice to that table, you will get the result. Some Christians are angry. Uh -uh. So, so people from sex, so, so religion are getting, are getting richer and Christian. And I say, do you know the covenant they, those people, do you know the kind of covenant they are servicing? The level of the sacrifice is something else. We can, and they are the one that tells Christians not to give in church. If you know the way they give. If you know the way they give. I said, your pastors are lying to you. Your pastors are using you to make money. If you know the way they give. Eh? When they face that side to say their prayers by power of repetition and the power of consistency five times in a day. What they say is the same thing. Is what they say today. Is what they say in the morning, afternoon, night. They will say it tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Every day of their life. I'm coming. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. And then, number three, altars can be people. There are people that by the virtue of their relationship with the Lord, they have become altars. Powerful people. Powerful people. You touch them. The movement of the issue of blood said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. What is in Jesus? That if somebody touches him, he will be made whole. Altars. Men that have become God on earth. I was sharing a testimony. It happened to us. We were here together. Wednesday. Was it last week Wednesday? And we kept calling on instant miracle. Instant testimony. And this woman came into the office. And said one of her ear has been blocked. For long. It was me and you. And we, we asked her to close. She said hey, faintly. And you will see that it is because we were that close. That's why she could still hear something. Only for her to send me a message. And told me that her ear has been opened. She cannot explain. I mean, I read that message. I, I almost, I almost, I almost cried. What is this? Uh, I wish I can find. Yeah. She said, testimony of instant miracles. I can hear with my right ear again. It has been the case since... Two days ago, but I needed to be sure. She was ill for two days before she now reached out to me. I have not received any medical treatment for the air challenge. The doctors of doctors did it. God did it. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are men that if you touch them, if you touch them, you can be healed instantly. I've told us here of a woman that if your child is misbehaving, you don't need to beat the child. You don't need to pray for the child. She too does not need to pray for the child. Send the child to go and live in her house. By the time that child is coming out, she's that, that boy will become an evangelist. It's automatic. It's an anointing that is unexplainable. Some of you don't know that these things are real. Life is spiritual. You see that? And nobody is watching. You don't know what you are doing to your spirit. You don't know what you are doing to your body. The body of man can literally become like a shrine where men can come without having to pour water and oil. Once they make contact with that body, they begin to receive healing. There is something about human altar that is unexplainable. The Bible says, if the spirit that is in Christ shall quicken your mortal body, ah, he said, if that spirit dwells in you, the same spirit will quicken your mortal body. That this is the same body, this same jacket. But people will know that you are no longer an ordinary man. Altars. This is what I'm telling church people today. That things don't just happen. Lifting don't just come. People make it happen. He 
enough of all these games that you are playing with the Lord. Get serious with Jesus. There are dimensions you need to you need to you need to touch. Channels of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father, open up. No boundaries, no limit, open up. Let deep call on to deep, open up. There is something inside of you that needs to be bettered. Something needs to come out of this life. What seekest thou? Why did you, why, see, why are you serving the Lord? Money? Money is the smallest thing anybody can seek before God. It's the smallest. I'm telling you today. And I will tell you why I said that. You would think I don't need money by making that statement. I do. But you know something? You know something? I have seen people with money beg for help. I have been driven in the, one of the best cars to one of the best houses in town to go and pray for people who have all the money but still suffering. So if you think money will answer all the problem, you, you will be faced with a rude shock in life by the time money is humiliated at Lagos Hospital. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. The Bible talk, spoke about, you know, um, the Bible says he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray. Now let me begin to tell you about the sacrifice on the altar. I, I grew up, ma, seeing my grandfather who go every morning, ma. This is a man that is a powerful person in, his, in, the, in the religion they practice at the time, but they had other religions attached. Every morning, he must carry water and carry palm oil and break cola nut and pour it here and go from here and pour it here and go from here and pour it here. And then you look at this man. What do you want? Power. They pour those sacrifices. Let me tell you. The one that shocked me most is cola nut. For their cola nut to produce well, there are sacrifices they make to cola nut. <laughs> every year, every year you will see them do that thing. They have prepared that kind of sacrifice and they will use cutlass and break the part of the, the body of the tree and open it up and put that sacrifice and speak incantation and go like that. I, I don't know. The trees, the Kulano trees in that farm can't be less than 2,000 plus. They'll do it. They can do that for a whole week. What? what? Kulano is taking sacrifice. And you will wonder how trailers upon trailers will come and be packing Kulano. Hello, sir. So, altars, the way to service an altar is to put sacrifice there at all times. Sacrifice. Many Christians don't understand this. This is the thing behind giving. You know why they are doing that? For every of these sacrifices you put on the altar, there is a spirit that is waiting to be activated. That spirit is waiting for a day that you will do it to a particular level and say, yes, you are calling me, I'm here. It's the same thing with the spirit of wealth. Let me tell you. Two people, I need two people. I know, come. My brother, come. Let me show you why... They kept saying, some of these words are spiritual, we don't know. Open your eyes and see me. Open your eyes. Why they kept saying the poor will remain poor. I mean, the rich will keep getting richer and the poor will keep getting poorer. Let me show you today. The rich. Have you, have you wondered why um, Americans have this mindset of giving? That they just give. They call it charity, Abby. Eh? Every born America grow into learning about charity. Have you have you asked yourself why? Have you asked yourself why? Except somebody is afflicted by the spirit of addiction in America, they don't beg. Have you noticed? They don't beg. They give instead of begging. 
Have you noticed? I'll show you today. Please never forget this thing that I'm about to show you in your life. There is a spirit waiting. It's called the spirit of wealth. The only way to bring that spirit to function in your life and stand with you forever is that you keep giving out what he has given to you. There is a spirit called the spirit of poverty. Sorry, you are not going to be poor in life. I promise you. That spirit, the only way to service it is to keep begging. Once you keep giving, you will keep having. Hello, sir. I am telling you, it's not about Christ, being a Christian. It's not about being a Muslim. It's not about being an Hindu. It's not, mm -mm, it has nothing to do with religion. It's an altar. Money is spiritual. Money. So long as you keep begging, it, the chain for poverty will hold you tight. I am not joking to you. I have learned, I read it in many books. I did my research before I made this statement. So long as you enjoy begging, is the reason why you can never find me begging. Never. The worst I can do if I don't have is to borrow from you and give it back. You will never find me begging. Whether by style or by crooks or by game or by anything, I don't beg. Let me tell you. Yoruba to have a philosophy that backs it up. Yoruba people say, okay, lower phone in bay. Have you heard it? What will make Yoruba to also know about that thing? These things are spiritual. Hello, sir. He hello, hello, everybody. Please, ushers, come close to me. Come, come. This thing is burning me like fire. I want to see, listen. Because to make billionaires, billionaires are not people who keep, they are people who give. The best way to make a man remain in hardship, financial hardship. Let him continue to give. There are two things. Is it that, I mean, to, to beg. There, is it that is somebody who cannot give or somebody who is always begging? You see those two people. People who just want to amass to themselves. They are not giving to anybody. Not being blessed by anybody. They don't have any altar where they are giving to. Hello, sir. So don't get angry that some people from one particular religion are getting rich out. What they sacrifice, you cannot. I have learned the art of pieces in money. Eh? That every day, something goes out from my body to somebody I don't know. It's a mystery that cannot be broken. This is why the fathers of faith taught us to give in church. But you know, the devil is fighting giving in church because he knows that it has empowered a lot of people. Do you know how many billionaires Winner's Chapel has raised? Yeah. The devil is making everybody today to fight that church because they were the one that brought about the major teaching about giving. Abby? And they thought it is just all about you wanting to steal money from members. Listen. I have told people one thing. This church, if we decide that nobody is going to give again, honestly, believe me under God, I will not be poor in life. I'll tell you why. Don't think it is your money. I have, I have paid the deals. There are people that God has raised through me that will never let me go hungry. If you like, call it uh, bragging. I want to brag. Should a good father not brag? You have trained your children where you should brag. All of them are watching me online now. They cannot let my children beg for bread. But you know that thing. Somebody give me cash. Somebody look for cash and give me. Look for cash and give me. It's a mystery. Oh. Don't forget this thing I'm teaching you every day of your life. I want more. I want more. Please know how much you give me. Oh. Who is giving me more cash? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me more cash. God bless you. Know how much you give me. Not, I'm not collecting offering you. Oh. It's not offering. It's not offering. Hello? Hello? Hey. Every morning, Monday, give him some. You do like this. Go back. You have done the one for Monday. Tuesday, come back. Go back. Wednesday, come back. Go back. Thursday, come back. One day. The spirit... 
that supervise prosperity will come and begin to supervise this. This man will never lack what to give. This man will never have what to receive. This is why the northern part of Nigeria today eh, remains the poorest in Africa. The few people who has, eh, they kept having. Because during fasting, all the money they have for the season, they will use it to cook food for the poor. And the poor that have learned how to beg from childhood will come and feed at their table. When they, the poor people, the rich people in the north, they hardly marry more than two wives. Eh? The poor people will marry 14 wives. He does not know how many children he has. He just knows that about four women gives birth per year. Eh? And from the day they do naming ceremony, he will name that boy Aruna. That's the last day he will set his eyes on that boy. Because from that day, they are waiting for the boy to be one year, six months. Once he can walk, they will take him to Kano or take him to Bauchi and give him a plate and tell him to start begging. They will fight this video if they, if they see it because they know this is what they have done to their territory. This is the reason the few rich among them eh, are the ones wanting to rule the nation by all means. They will kill to get to the position of power. And let me tell you, they will never allow those Almajiri boy boys to school because they are the one empowering them. That spirit. Do, so long as they keep giving them that one, one era, they will keep getting richer. Oh yeah, who is going to be my? Who is going to be my? Help me share the money back, please. If somebody says he's looking for his money, you have to go back to their bank. You can go back to your seat. Please put your hands together for them. <laughs> now let me tell you what I just did. I just showed you how to service an order. That you don't come there every day to beg. You come there to give. Ah! Ah! I don't know who got what I just did here. It's not about money. Oh. It's beyond money. Even though it works with money, the altar of prayer is a place where you come to give. There is a song. Um, there was this song Debbie sang before she left here. Something about... What's that song? That Yoruba song. Iba, oh, Iba. That altar is waiting for somebody who will come and say Iba every money. So long as you are coming to say you buy every money, it's not only money that will come into your life. Ah, I don't know how this thing is doing me. We have told people, see, I made a mistake sometimes ago too, to go and be telling somebody that uh, uh, prayer cannot bring you money. It can bring you money. It's a mistake. I'm correcting it now. It doesn't mean you should be lazy. The Bible said the diligent, uh, what's that word now? The hand of the diligent make it rich. If you stay in the place of prayer, what men seek for, what men dies for, can walk into your life. The Bible, have you wondered about that adage that says that wherever carcasses are, it said eagles will find it. Why is it that carcasses cannot also make a move and go and look for help? Eh? But there's a spiritual system that can rout them to where carcasses are. I, I, I don't know how many of you believe in what I'm doing today, but I tell you the truth. I have, I have searched this thing and I found life out of it. There was a season in my life where people told me that I would die hungry. I, I didn't do anything else but pray. One way or the other, life began to walk towards me gradually. I, I, and and look, look at me, look at me. Look at me. For all the times I looked for money in my life, money never came. The day I turned back from looking for money, money began to run after me. This year, I have sat in places where you will look at me and say, who is your mother? Who, who do you know? How did those people come? Prayer brought them. Altar, my altar brought them. Your altar can command into your life things that you will never believe when they come. My altar has made people in the most, most revered position in this nation begin to look for me and begin to make me look like I'm bigger than this. It's not pride. I have met powerful people in my life. 
I've met people who will beg me not to tell anybody that it is them I'm speaking to. And I'll say, your secret is safe with me. Why can people call me and mention their name? It will look like the phone want to fall from my hand. There is no way I will have been able to speak to their gate man. You think it is connection? You are, you are, you are forcing your way to go, and, to go and connect yourself to big, big people. I yaka take I. My wife is the one that even begs me sometimes to ah, call this person. Now, she people are know, you know yourself. I say, no, I don't need to. You know why? When I go to the secret place and I say, my altar is calling you. Oh, God. Well, now, when, when I begin to do that, my altar calls him, he calls them. My altar My altar calls him. And when he comes, he calls them into my life. You think it's magic? No, sir. It's not magic. Every prayer ministry that started without prayer, they died. What? I mean, every ministry, sorry, that started without prayer, they died. Go and check. Every major ministry that is doing well today, they started on the on the on the platform of prayer. They record, they built an altar and they stood there. Ministry is not about speaking English. English does not heal anybody from sickness. English can't save anybody's life. A testimony was coming to us while we're coming to church today. And, and I was sharing with my wife. And this this my beloved, my beloved um, man came into this office one time and, and you could see the expression of somebody that the devil has dealt with so much and it's looking like life is not making sense again. I'm sure it may be washing. One day I'm going to share his full testimony. Spread his certificate on the table. I say, can somebody who has all of this still be suffering? When they ask you that question as a pastor, what do you say? But there is a way I can put your name on my table. Shana Katiada. Father, you can come to this man. You can visit him. And then testimony began to come to him. Number one. Number two. Number three. This is the man that is looking like everybody is throwing him out of everywhere he goes. And today people are begging him, come and work on our team. And this afternoon he began to share with me. We were driving. I had to pick his car. I'm sure whether himself or the wife are looking at me now. I had to pick his car and he was telling me how that an organization is calling him and where they want him to sit in our organization. About four other companies or five other companies are going, I mean, five other um, departments, major departments, I'm not talking about small organizations, are going to be under him. And this is a man who just two months ago, you know what prayer can do to somebody? Pastor Mike, whatever you need, prayer can drag it into your life. It does not matter whether you are qualified for it or not. Prayer can drag, it can drag men into your life. I, say, I, say, I don't want to have anything to do with that boy. Go and pray. <laughs> One day, the power of prayer, the power of your altar will drag them to your presence. It will drag them to your presence. So if you don't value prayer, don't come here again. Sit down. You think I am lonely? We got here by loneliness. Inside the wilderness. The only voice that we are used to is the voice of birds moving around. And the voice of animals that we cannot even recognize. So if somebody wants to deal with somebody like me with loneliness, you better get ready. You will stay long there. Because I understand what loneliness. Loneliness sometimes can give me opportunity to pray. Because you are no longer disturbing me again. You are not coming with gist. My life is not about gist. I've gisted enough. My life didn't change all the time I spent gisting. Let me gist with the one who can change my life and change yours. Don't call me on phone spending one hour. For what? What are we talking about? Whom? As your news, as your uh, pastor, let me even tell you this one that happened in 1999. What, what has it changed? If you cannot shakapakatakata on the phone, get out of my phone. It's not a useless phone. There are others for you to service. Stop talking rubbish with people who don't have anywhere to go. 
Are you, are, you are a suspect. If you are spending one hour making up, you are a suspect. You are partnering with a demon. You are a Christian, you will spend one hour making up a face that will die and finish one day. For one event. Women, I love you, you know. But I will not pardon nonsense. Hello? <laughs> In case you are angry, <laughs> forgive yourself. Oh. <laughs> we are just started. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you still love me? There's no way you will really love me. Oh. You are not saying the truth. Praise the Lord. The power of consistency. Now, now look at it. You remember what I did with that money the other time? It has to be consistent. Why do you think they use rosary in Catholic? They will count that rosary several times, saying one thing. Why do you think they use it? Consistency is spiritual, Pastor Mike. If you have been saying you're real, we're real, we're real, we're for a child, I'm telling you, the guy will lose his senses one day. Just be consistent. You did something when you were in Nayot, a practical of planting two different things. And one, you planted it, you left it. The other one, you planted it and you were praying on it every day. What happened to the one you were praying to? It began to germinate. Look at me. Everything grows under prayer. <laughs> ah. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the If you are giving up on that dream, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you are giving up on your vision, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray now, pray now. Pray now. Pray now. Pray now. Pray now. Pray Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Everything grows when we pray. 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 So pali nige bo shaka baha in the kemana kaba take a pen. Shaka bata kataka. Raka da ba so pali nige ba shaka ba take a pen. Shaka ba te la kaba radia ba ya nige desh. Raka da ba irakuma ni. Ma ba 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 ka da ka da ka tiki ya. Ali kara ba sata ya takaba maleka brado shenge ba take a pen. In the kemani kapa la nige. In Jesus precious name we are praying. If it's not growing, start praying. I'm telling you, everything grows under prayer. Consistency, definition. Consistency is conformity with previous attitudes, behaviors, and practice. Now, I wrote here, I said, if you practice something consistently for a period of time, you have opened up that thing to interested spirits. To come and do business with you. Hello, sir. If you practice hardship for a long time, you have opened up yourself to a spirit that sponsors or supervises hardship. They will stand with you. People are, are, are unknowingly opening themselves to strange spirits. That's the same way when People open themselves to prostitution for a long time. It becomes a problem. They will not be able to stop. If you have seen addicted people, people who are addicted to drugs or, or alcohol, it's because they have opened themselves up to that thing for a very long time. The spirit that supervises alcoholic addiction has come to stand in their life. They must drink. The same way, if you pray, Every day, for a long time. The day you don't want to pray, it will become the issue of my spirit indeed is weak, but the spirit is willing. 
So because the spirit is willing, the spirit will make you pray. I don't know what kind of sickness that can before me now that I will not pray. You will not believe what happened to me Monday morning. Monday morning, I did not come to ignition. I opened the video. I be, was I the one that opened the video? Yes, I was the one now. I opened the video. I stepped out because I want to sleep. Abby, I slept truly. But in my sleep, it was a dream of prayer all through. By the time I will be waking up, it was 7.29. So it means that that morning, I prayed my own ignition prayer till 7.29 because I did not come for the physical one. So the spirit said, oh, no, no. That's, where, that's what bad spirit does to a lot of people who don't know. You, you just see yourself treating sickness every month because you have, you have permitted sickness for too long. The days you are not even sick, you lied in the office that you are sick. So that spirit kept washing you lying about sickness. Going to the HR to go and say you have a headache today. Next tomorrow you lie, you have a headache. Headache will come. The kind of headache will, that will not come. It will be my grave. It will not go again. So everything we do in life, there's a spirit component. Somebody make a con the confession to me. One brother made a confession to me one time. Said he, is, he has lied many times that he had accident. Wait now. Now he now had the kind of accident that claimed his both legs. Words are powerful. Do you do you have your do you have your uh, uh, easy worship? Can I have James 3 3? Be fast about it. If you have been saying something, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, I am. You say it today, you say it tomorrow, you say it next tomorrow, you say. If you are saying, I am famous, I am famous, I am famous, I am famous, one day fame will break out. Do I have it? Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their old body. Go on. Mercy, go on. Behold also the sheep, which though they, may, they be so great and are driven fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small um, whatsoever. Even so, the tongue is a little number. Uh -huh. And boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the course of the nature of nature and it is set on fire of hell this mouth if i keep telling you that's why anybody that plays with you are mad should not be your friend forgive me but in case you are very angry i'm going to repeat it tomorrow if you are if you are saying ah, ah what's wrong with you you are mad you are being blocked already. I'll block you today. Tomorrow you come back, you check me, you are still blocked. I cannot be mad, yo. You can't make me mad. Me more. <laughs> you are, the, the only way to pray with me is to say, I am mad. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad. That's the lie. But by the time they are writing it, they didn't, they didn't write, making a difference fully. They still write mad. May you not be mad. <laughs> My time is fast spent. <laughs> ah, you are stupid. That's a joke. Oh. Don't, don't, don't joke that rubbish with me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And you have come to Zion tribe, you have seen our confession. I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am favored. I am free. How can you call a free man mad? Madness is bondage. Stop talking that kind of joke. I want us to pray for a few minutes. Why altars are so important? Let me quickly run through that and then we close. Why the altar of prayers are so important. Prayer is God's authorized system. That's number one. Prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him. The altar of prayer 
is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Now, is the, the system of communion and fellowship with God. Luke chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. Prayer and the altar of prayer is an authorized system of communion and fellowship with God. Matthew chapter 26 and in verse 36, the Bible said, Then come at Jesus with them unto a place where he began to shout on Peter, Peter, pray that you fall not into temptation. Pray! The way to not fall into temptation is to pray. Let me tell you, some of you are struggling with sins today. That sin you are struggling with, begin to pray. Begin to pray consciously about that sin. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are hiding it from men, don't hide it from God. Father, I have fallen into the sin of lying now again. Lord, help me. You, you can't say it for a week and lie the next week. Hello? If you are falling into the sin of fornication regularly, eh? let me teach you how to, how to conquer fornication. The next time that the thing is beginning to prick your heart, to go and meet that person you always fornicate with, so you will mention her name and say, Father, my mind is telling me to go to Simbi. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violence take it by force. My mind is pricking me to go to Simbi. I want to obey you. Help me. Help me. You keep going. You are going to Simbi's house. Keep going. A force from the spirit of God will push you back to your house. Try it. One week. You can go that one week and struggle with that spirit. A day will come you will wake up. If you don't wake up with a dream, you wake up with a trance. That will tell you if you try it, I'll kill you. Because you have now involved him. You, see, you think sin is easy to break out of? No, sir. Especially secret sin that nobody is watching. And let me tell you, if you are engaging in secret sin, it's only a matter of time. The day the blow will come, you will not expect it. Number two. Prayer creates a legal platform for God, for angels, and for the spirit realm to gain entrance and access into the affairs of men. Let me say that again. Prayer creates a legal platform for God, for angels, and for the spirit realm to gain entrance into the affairs of men and to assist men and to assist men. Psalm 115 verse 16. The Bible said the heaven, even the heavens of the law, of, of heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has it given to the children of men. Let me tell you what it means. There is no way God will do anything here without you. There's no way God will do anything in your life without you. That's why we pray. I promise you, if you are waiting, there's a song, I love the song, but if you don't sing that song with the right mindset, you are going to miss it. Oluwa Montioche, Jesumi Montioche, he knows what he will do, but he wants you to ask him. So ask him. Don't assume that he knows what to do, and then you stop praying. Ask him, Father, is it this man? Am I supposed to marry this man? Ask him, Father, this job, should I take it? Ask him, Father, this house, should I live there? Ask him. It's not bad to ask the Lord about the house you want to live. Because People packed into a house and died the following week. If you don't believe in these things, I'm watching you and I'm laughing. Because you are still in Africa. And you are still alive. You are probably passed by a witch today that is looking for blood. Forgive me. But I'm telling you the truth. Some of you start in the same bus with somebody who is looking for human head in the past one month. I don't know. <laughs> Number three, the altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance. Now, let me round up this way. 
there are some things that don't want to bow to you. There are gates who will never bow to you until you force them. Rise to your feet. You think the devil will put somebody in a chain of sickness and want them to go? The devil is not a time waster. He does not waste his time. Every time that the devil invests on lives, eh, he cherishes it. And he, will, he, he does not like to waste his time. So now, can, can I pray with you? That thing that is affecting your prayer life, that has turned you to a lukewarm believer, a lukewarm leader in the church, you better chase it out with fire. Eh? You, be, you better chase it out with fire. I want you to pray first of all and say, Father, say it after me now. Say, Father, Father, every lukewarmness in my life, in my life, in the name of Jesus, in the name of by Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy I Ghost, I chase it out now. I shake it. I chase out lukewarmness. I shake. I chase out boredomness. I shake. I chase out lukewarmness. I shake. I chase out coldness. I shake out. Open your mouth and pray. Zata kata kata. Baraka de biya de kata kata. Karaba sata ya de kabale kamante. In Tokomani Kabahab, I shake out lukewarmness. I shake it out. 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 In the name of Jesus. I destroy lukewarmness. Look warmness I can't continue with the ideas of God. Look warmness die. Look warmness die. die. Look warmness die. die. In my life. By fire, fire die. die. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus precious name we are prayed. Amen. Let me tell you this. Prayerless people are always angry at prayerful people. When they see results. Don't be angry with me. I'm not the one that told you not to pray. You can imagine people joining ignition in the morning. Ignition or that fire prayer every morning and they are still sleeping. How can I sleep? Under that kind of atmosphere. So that will tell you that in Nigeria, many people that join online prayers, many of them don't pray. Hmm? And you hear people sharing testimonies every day. Should that not move you? All you are looking for is to see the man of God one-on-one. -on -one. When men are standing up early in the morning, nobody loves their bed too much and break through. Can I say it's in English? Nobody who loves their bed so much enjoy breakthrough. Nobody who enjoy their bed too much enjoys breakthrough. You are looking for breakthrough. 7 p.m. you are on the bed. And you will not get out of bed until 12 p.m. And you are looking for job. When the gates of job in the realm of the spirit has been locked up, all you need to do is to say, Kaka, baka, teka. Open up! Because I am here, open up! You will shed lukewarmness out of your life. Help me help somebody. And say, lukewarmness in the life of this man, die now. Lukewarmness, die. Hold them, hold their hands, hold their hands. Zeka, teka, teka, teka. If the person praying for you is lukewarm, leave them alone. It's not gentle prayer. It's not a silent prayer. If the person you are holding is too gentle, leave them alone. They don't want to go.
You want to pray for yourself now. Stand where. My altar is calling you. Oh God. Let me tell you what you do to yourself. If you find a place where you pray every day consistently. Listen. Listen, everybody. Anytime you appear there and you just say, Kapa, Katikita, Kalata. You know what you're doing? You are summoning angels. You are some Akika Tumbakai. What it means is that the throne of God has suddenly shifted to that place. And Tabanaku there. How do you explain somebody praying over the internet? Over the internet. And blood related sickness disappearing. How do you explain it? Potters. Apart from the fact that men has become potters. The place where they sit can communicate, can communicate dimensions of possibility to people such that you do not know it can ever happen and it begins to happen. That's the reason why I know you are a lazy Christian. If you are not going anywhere on Wednesday and you are not coming to Zion tribe, you are really a lazy Christian. You are very lazy. And you should not be trusted. I can't trust you. You know why I cannot trust you? You know why? I don't know whether you are possessed. Why are you not praying? I don't know where you worship, but if it's not in a place where they pray, eh, they should be suspected. The only way to check whether a man is fervent and whether a man is spiritual is prayer. Ah, but no, ah, we, we don't really pray like that in our church. We just study the word. You people, who, who, which Jesus did? Jesus that prayed all night. You know, we are not praying all night again. No, no, all night service again. The government has also contributed to it because some of them are demonized. And our prayer in the night are disturbing them. Political meetings are organized in the night and it is the sharing of blood most of the time. So they don't want that prayer that will seize them. But you can pray inside your room. You can turn your room to a living potter. I was telling my wife, you know, a friend who is a powerful minister of God came to sleep on my bed one day, just one day. Spent about three hours on my bed. And he came out from my bed and he began to tell me revelations. Ah, what kind of bed is this? He said, the three hours I enjoyed the sleep. He said, but it was revelation from revelation. Oh, some of you, your bed. Listen, close your eyes, everybody. Let me quickly do something here. You don't need to close your eyes. Let me just explain because of time. If you are here, you are struggling with fornication. You better come and see me. Come and see me. Oh. Come and, you have nothing to hide. Nobody hides fornication from the devil. He's the one supervising it. Everyone you go and sleep with a man that you are not married to is watching you. Seriously watching you. And the day is going to come with his judgment. It will look like you are... You are the Bible says the man, a man that is giving to... What's that word? He said it's not worth more than a morsel of bread. That's because when the devil comes to deal with you, you will not be up to a morsel of bread. That's what it means. You are dealing with fornication or adultery. Run to me after service. Run. 
Wrong. Fight the energy. Wrong. Because when the devil is done with you, eh? Even my prayer will not be able to help you. Don't say P. Young is there for me. I am watching over my life to live rightly. That's the reason why any of you here say your me has done eyes like this to me before. Come out and say it. You go and do mushy mushy with me. That's the last time you ever stand beside me. You are blocked from Zion tribe. They see you at the door. They pursue you like a mad person. Send you out and send you far away from here. You are the demon we are trying to pray about in this church. Come and be doing much, much and be shaking body in front of pastor. Oh, they must go pastor, Nimi. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Help me pray for somebody. Now we want to open some doors. But before we open those doors, I want you to stand right and say, Father, help me build an altar. If you already have an altar that is working, tell the Lord, Father, set my altar on fire. Say, Akateka. Jakata Katekai, my altar set my altar of fire. Set my altar of fire. Set my altar. Open your mouth, people, and pray. Set my altar of fire. Jakata Kateka Tabayata. In Jesus, precious name we are praying. Amen. The best gift you can give to yourself as you grow as a believer is prayer. 